And this is my son, Sandal, who is as brilliant an enchanter as you'll ever find. Say hello to the nice human, Sandal. Hello. Hello, everyone. My name is Ash, and welcome to another DA Talk, where we talk about things in the DA universe relevant to your interests. This time, Sandal. Sandal is one of the lesser-known characters in Dragon Age, as his origins are seldom talked about. But let's learn a bit, shall we? Sandal is the adopted son of dwarven traveling merchant Bodan Fedek. Bodan found him in the Deep Roads years ago and raised the boy as his own. Although not a very talkative person beyond a few words, including his famous excitement for enchantment, Sandal has a keen aptitude for runes and enchantment of weapons and armor. Originally, Sandal and Bodan traveled with the Warden, or the hero of Ferelden. After the Fifth Blight's end, the duo came to Kirkwall and joined Hawk and company on their expedition to the Deep Roads. Eventually, they became a Hawk's home. Many have appreciated Sandal's skills, the Circle of Magi calling Sandal a savant, and his abilities have gained the attention of many, including Empress Selene of Orlais. Not much is known about Sandal's background, but his actions have shed a considerable light in the past. Time and time again has Sandal created unexplainable circumstances that have both dumbfounded both the Warden and Hulk. In Origins, he carved a way through a heavily darkspawn infested Fort Draken in order to sell his father's wares and offer his services. The same happened again at the Gallows in DA2 where Sandal sat in a room strong with dead demon corpses. In the Deep Roads expedition, Hulk found him standing gleefully next to numerous dead spawn bodies and a frozen ogre. His explanation? Not enchantment. His capabilities may be caused by the lack of what I like to counter-reference as his stone sense. In DA2 Legacy, Karta members believe that Sandal was the bastard son of Naidukin, an either elf or human woman. He was initially left in the Deep Roads to fend for himself, according to Bodan, so we can measure the Karta members may be in fact correct. He also has shown a strange divinity to magic and quite possibly the fate. In DA2, he divulges some lines characterizing what may be the next enemy in Inquisition. One day the magic will come back. All of it. Everyone will be just like they were. The shadows will part, and the skies will open wide. Huh? What's this? When he rises, everyone will see. The ancestors, what's gotten into you, my boy? Enchantment? That's more like it. Sandal never speaks about this prophecy again, and later, Bodan confesses that he and Sandal are to move to Orlais to serve the Empress. Now, my personal question is what do you think of Sandal, and what do you think he knows? My personal thoughts on this pretty much dwindle down into Sandal has mag magical capability from his mother's side. And of course, that capability is restricted by his father's resistance delirium. Being an Iduken, you would not have the capability of being a mage ever because you spend all of your time in the, in either the Deep Roads or in Orzammar. Now, Sandal isn't a mage, I don't think that. However, he knows way more about things to come. He has a sort of capability to understand what is happening. He prophesized the veil tearing, basically ripping in that huge rip in the sky. Undoubtedly, he will be Inquisition, and obviously because he is going with Bodan to Orlais. So I don't want to get too much into it, but I feel that he does have a connection to the Fade on some kind of thing. Some kind of level. Because, for instance, in whenever he is in Hawk's house, he mentions on the old lady that has a scary laugh. Now obviously, the first thing that comes into my mind is, oh hey, that could be Flemeth. It's possible, or it could be another sinister character that's to be determined. But if he's seen, if he's not seeing this in real life, although it does mention that he sees this woman next to his bed, or it could be during the dream state, and technically dwarves aren't supposed to dream, but obviously he's only half dwarf, so he could very well have the ability to experience or tap into the Fade the same way that mages can. I mean, the prophecy is already scary enough. There are a million questions that arise. Who is he? When will he rise? When he rises, everyone will see. I'm pretty sure it's close to the Venatori that we learned about in Inquisition. If you listen to the actual character banter that happens with the enemy, it does say he will rise. And that's one of the things that is mentioned. I don't have much to say about Sandal, but I'm pretty sure that he's not only important in the next game, and we'll be able to see him 
and we'll be able to talk to him, and hopefully he can help us with enchantments, and I hope he'll stay in one of the strongholds. But personally, I think he knows way more, and I think he's even more important than the old god baby will ever be. Even though the old god baby I mentioned may have dragon blood, may have darkspawn blood, may be able to call to the other darkspawn, which is a comment that someone left so awesomely in the last video, and I will have that hopefully on screen. But Sandal is going to be very important in the next game, and I cannot wait until they let us know what's going on. So moving on, as I mentioned, there were some really insightful comments, like the one I mentioned about basically the old god baby being able to call to the other darkspawn. And I got a lot of different insight about the old god baby from other people, admittedly some that I didn't know about, or didn't think about rather. Um, one of the things that was asked, and more of a question thing, which I think I need to mention because, as I mentioned before, I have mentioned in my past videos that the difference between Bioware canon and your canon, and how it doesn't matter what you play as, you can have certain options be available or not available. Like I said, this is your story. It's your Inquisitor, it's your Hawk, it's your Warden. You can choose the choices that you want. But okay, I'm detracting it. Let's go into the actual question. So, Alistair being king of Feraldin in personal canons, specifically. Is that because you played your game that way or because you have info from Bioware that Alistair will be king of Feraldin in Inquisition? If so, what happened to all the players who chose to be a male Kuzlin that married Queen Anora? Do you have any official confirmation on the subject? Now, okay, like I said, your canon is your own. If you killed Alistair, if you had him sacrifice himself for the greater good to defeat the Archdemon, if you married Anora, or if you got rid of her, if you became king, or you put Alistair on the, on the throne, it doesn't really matter. You will have those choices in the next game. You'll be able to see that. Obviously, it'll be a little bit undertone because the one that we're looking at is the Inquisitor. But these choices will be in the next game. I'm not saying I have confirmation from Bioware because the only thing that I take from it is the comics. The comics and the books have a very specific thing, more specifically the comics, because in their version, in Bioware's version, they have it so that it's Alistair who is the king. And while this is the default Bioware canon that Alistair not only became king, but he also traveled away from Ferelden, he visited Tevinter and all these things, this is completely Bioware's version. This is one version. This is the comic version. Your choices will be represented in the next game. And I always say that, and I will repeatedly say that because there's a huge problem with canon whenever it comes to it. Oh, what is the right canon? Like for instance, whenever I make my perfect save, I think of it in the way that my perfect save allows many people to be alive and different choices. For instance, I don't want the architect to be alive. I really don't. But I kept him alive because I want to see down the line what he will do. He is the cause of the fifth blight. He's the reason why we had to deal with all that crap in Origins. And I want to see how it turns out, how he ends up enlightening the rest of the Darkspawn. So that's why I kept him alive. That's my personal canon. It doesn't have to be your canon, but you can keep those choices, or you can't if you don't want. Also, I think uh, another comment actually asked about whether these choices, if you have them in the first one, if you have them in Origins and you don't play DA2, can you have those switch over? And I mentioned it over in time again. DragonAgeKeep.com, you can sign up for the beta and it will open next year, 2014. You'll be able to choose the choices you want without actually having played in the game. Obviously, there's a couple of people who are like, well, what about the people that put so many hours into it and blah, blah, blah. Well, you're represented in here because everything is on there. DA, oh, um, Origins choices. You have Origins choices, DA2 choices, some of from the Flash game. They're also all the DLC listed. You'll be able to do the choice. If you have any experience with Gib Save Editor, it's basically like that, but it's going to be more interactive. It's going to be a web-based client. You'll be able to do it on your tablet, on your iOS, on Android. You'll be able to do it. It's a web-based kind of thing that you'll get to experience and import to the game. So, <laughs> and I sound like an advertisement there, but basically you'll be able to do that. So don't worry, you can keep your canon choices. 
or you can follow Bioware's canon according to the comics or the books. You can do whatever you want and you can keep that for the next game. But anyway, I'm going on a completely different tangent about choices and everything in canon. And eventually I will talk about canon, but to be honest, I do want to find out what you guys want to talk um, uh, talk about because last time a lot of people wanted to, what did I want to talk about? And what we should talk about is what you guys want to talk about. This time with Sandal, last time it was suggested that I talk about the old god baby. What comes next? There are a couple of questions that I will probably talk about like canon and also the different mage versus templar conflict. Let me know what you guys think. In any case, that's the end of DA Talk. Thank you for joining me. The question here, as I mentioned, is what do you think of Sandal and what is he not telling us? What does he know? Write it in the box below. I appreciate all of you being here. Take care and I'll see you all in the comments.